What's up everybody, I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're gonna to be reviewing the interior in the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. So the Ridgeline has a pretty extensive restyle here for the front end for 2021. And uh, it looks a lot more trucky than before. And that's what Honda was going for, is making this look more like a truck, uh, more aggressive up front there. So you have a taller hood, more aggressive uh, front bumper and all of that. Um, but as far as the inside goes here, uh, cause that's what this video is about, they didn't do much. Um, so there's a few missed opportunities here, uh, but overall this is still a really well thought out interior. It still has the most interior space in its segment of mid-sized trucks. So you're going to get a little bit more back seat space than you do in most other mid-sized crew cabs. So this is the base model we're in. So this is uh, like a worst case scenario for what a Ridgeline looks like on the inside. So you have the cloth seats, uh, the steering wheel isn't leather wrapped. So there are some parts that feel a little bit cheaper. Um, but thankfully you do have really good standard equipment. Like you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, standard touchscreen. Those types of things aren't always a given with some of the other competitors still. But I would say that the downside to this base model is the fact that it is plastic, plastic, and more plastic. <laughs> but then again, that's what you get for a base model these days normally. So there you go. And for mid-sized trucks too, you know, a lot of people don't care as much. That's why I think they, you know, made this a little bit more durable, I guess is the word, over like a Honda Pilot, which this shares almost an identical front interior with that has a little bit more, you know, nicer soft touch things here and there. Anyway, the first thing here, sitting down in these seats in the Ridgeline, they are really soft, comfortable seats. Even though they're cloth, uh, I like the cloth texture. I think it's, you know, pretty nice feeling. The seats have pretty good support as well. And, uh, you know, you do have multiple adjustments here, but you know, it's just your basic adjustments for height, uh, recline, and then forwards and backwards. So nothing too advanced there. But of course, if you go up to higher trims, you do get the power seats. And being the passenger, it is a nice, comfortable seat. It is a little bit on the firmer side. So just keep that in mind. But it does have your manual controls, except for your height but the height in here isn't as bad as you would think it was. I don't think it's anything that I would be upset about. Yeah, and you also do get a little bit extra headroom here because this one does not have a moonroof. That is something you get on the RTL and higher trims. So you don't get a moonroof in the base model, but that's the only way you skip out on that moonroof. But if you do want the most headroom possible, definitely go for this base trim. That's going to be the way you get the most headroom here. Um, and then, yeah, if you do want heated seats and things like that, you do have to go up to the RTL or higher to get those features as well. So just keep that in mind. But with the cloth seats, I feel like you don't really need the heating as much because they don't get quite as cold in the wintertime and stuff. Um, but then moving on to the steering wheel here, the ridge line it's a fine wheel it has a good nine and three grip like i said it feels a little cheap in this base model without the leather wrapping um but really my only complaint with it is that you have these buttons that are scattered all over the place it doesn't use the newer honda controls like you see on most of the other steering wheels that honda has and so it's just like you know you have your cruise control uh, controls up here and then you have the cluster controls down here on the spoke and then your phone controls on the other spoke and then you have all this other stuff for the radio on this it's just like all over the place and so it's just a little little much. Uh, I mean, it's logically arranged, so once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. It's just a lot more buttons on a steering wheel than you get with most other modern setups. And that's just something that they just haven't really kept the Ridgeline up to date with all the other newest Honda stuff. And th this is one area where it is lacking a little bit. It is nice to have paddle shifters here on the back of the wheel as well, but I don't know how many Ridgeline buyers are actually going to use those, but nice nonetheless. The gauges here in the Ridgeline are another area where this feels dated. They are identical to the gauges you got in a 2017 Ridgeline when this generation first came out. And I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're clear, easy to read dials. I love the huge, large speedometer. And you have just a little, you know, color display there, which will show you basic trip information and your adaptive cruise controls, you know, settings. And that's about it. It'll also show you a little display when you change the drive modes. But it's super basic. And this is one of the areas where I feel like Honda just phoned it in a little bit because again, this interior is identical to a Pilot up front here. And the Pilot has a huge digital portion in the middle, looks way more high resolution, way more modern, and it's literally like a swap out thing. Like it's not like it's a partsman thing that they already had that already fits. They could have just put it in and they didn't. I don't know if there's some kind of supplier issue or what, but I was expecting with this refresh for the Ridgeline, they would have updated some of this stuff. Instead, we have gauges that are five years old. And so it is what it is. Um, you know, I mean, again, mid-sized trucks aren't the pinnacle of automotive technology. You know, most of them have pretty dated tech but it's just there's no excuse for it in this because again they have stuff just sitting on the shelf that they just choose not to install for whatever reason um so none nonetheless though you know again fine gauges and uh you know it is what it is 
Coming over to the center of the dashboard here though, that complaint continues on with this infotainment system. So the size of it is fine, it's a touch screen so that's good, and it does have a volume knob here which is something they added here recently, and so nice to have a volume knob, still we're lacking a tune knob so tuning radio stations is a pain, but the biggest problem with this screen is it is so slow and laggy. It is one of the laggiest, I, honestly it's the laggiest infotainment system I've used this year so far. I mean it is horrible. I mean thankfully it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I would just highly recommend always using your smartphone integration and never bothering with this infotainment system because it is it is not great. Um, I mean, you press a button, if it even registers the press, then it takes like five seconds for it to switch over to whatever screen you're going to. It's just, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, not great. And honestly, and this is one area where all, a lot of the other midsize trucks do have better tech. The Ford Ranger has a better infotainment system, even the Toyota Tacoma, which Toyota is usually not the you know cutting edge with technology they have a better screen uh, in their stuff. I mean, it, basically everybody has better infotainment than the Honda Ridgeline, um, and so not great there. And honestly, how long it takes for everything to show up, I would assume that that would be a distracted driver situation where you could easily get into an accident because you're trying to press a button to get to the next thing and it won't show up and then you're, somebody in front of you stops and then you're in an accident. So I don't know, I just think it's bad. Yeah, um, I, I, this is another thing where the Honda Pilot, literally in the same exact cutout, has an infotainment system that is 10 times better. It has customizable tiles, it's super fast and snappy it's miles better and it's literally sitting on the parts shelf and Honda just chose not to put it in the Ridgeline here. Again, maybe there's some supplier issue, something behind the scenes, but on the surface level here, there's no good excuse for having this infotainment system still in the 2021 model that's again, a five-year-old system that didn't even feel great five years ago and certainly just again, is one of the worst out there these days. It just, it is what it is. I'm glad it has a smartphone integration so you can mostly avoid this horrible user interface. It'd be different if they had to develop a whole new thing and it was a big, long, expensive thing to do, but it, when it's so easy, you could literally swap units. Um, I just can't give them a pass for that. So it is what it is. But then moving on to the climate controls here in the Ridgeline, those are really great. I mean, it's you know fairly basic, but nice and easy to use. Just a few buttons, no complaints there. Another thing that's fantastic about the Ridgeline is the storage space. They did do a very good job, and this is where this is going to be better than most of the other competitors, and this is where we're starting to get into some of the strong suits of the Ridgeline, because there are many things about the Ridgeline that are much better than its competitors. Storage space is one. So first in the doors, you have three levels of pockets. You have one here by your grab handle, this huge tray here with a bottle holder on the top, and then you have another large pocket here on the bottom, which on its own is already, you know, probably best in class as far as storage goes. But then in the middle here, you have this little slot beneath the climate controls and also this other uh, rubberized pad which in higher trims will be a wireless phone charger but in here in the base model it's just a you know normal little bin you also will see a traditional power outlet as well as a usb jack you have two cup holders which in higher trims actually do have ambient lighting but here in this one are just standard um and uh, you also have the push button shifter here which is something they added uh recently and uh, so that kind of frees up some space there and then you have this huge uh center console area and it's kind of unique how you have just these little fold-down armrest which I actually kind of really like this because then it just gives you this massive bin you open up and I mean it's really deep and has this little sliding uh, tray and another power outlet and another USB jack in there and uh, that's a way bigger bin than you're gonna get in any of the other competing trucks in this segment so um, like I said, interior storage is second to none in the Ridgeline. They did a really good job with all of that. Backseat space in the Ridgeline here is also very good. So it's, you know, a little bit more space than you get in the backseat of most other crew cab pickups, uh, at least mid-sized pickups. So I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. I have about two or so inches of legroom to spare. So it's not spacious by any means. And if you want a big backseat in a truck, you're gonna have to go up to a full-size truck, um, regardless of what brand you're going with. But this is gonna be a little bit more spacious than most of the other competing trucks. So if, you know, you're someone who's wanting to put in a car seat or something like that, those are going to fit better in this than they will in a comparable Tacoma, Ranger, something like that. Those are all going to have a smaller back seat. And so it's really, uh, you know, nice you have a little bit of extra space. You also have a nice flat floor. And so when you lift up those rear seats, because they do lift up, then you can have, you know, a nice large little loading area there to put all kinds of things. And uh, when you look forward, you see they even have dedicated air vents. Even in the base model here, you have tri-zone climate control, which is a very nice thing to have as a, you know, standard feature in a base model and so great to have that you also have two little cubbies and there's also even a full down center armrest which 
also oftentimes gets uh, thrown out whenever you go to a base model. But here in the base model ridge line, you do have that with cup holders and a little storage bin in that fold down armrest. There's also a little pocket in the door in the back there. And uh, you know, lots of headroom of course as well there for the back seat occupants since it's just a nice boxy truck. Uh, cab and uh, so yeah, I mean a really great back seat there all things considered and Then the truck bed here in the Ridgeline is also uh, Very unique. So that is one area that's different than most other trucks out there So uh, the first thing is getting into the actual bed itself So it does drop down like a normal truck bed and here in this base model It's not damped or anything so it is kind of heavy and you have to make sure it doesn't drop down too fast uh, But it is interesting that it actually does swing out as well And so you can have it open um, like a normal door and uh, that's kind of a cool touch unfortunately this one it was locked or there was some reason it wasn't working correctly so I will show you the footage from my 2017 Ridgeline review for how that swings up and in this one I could not get it to work for whatever reason uh, but anyway um, whenever you do open up that truck bed what you'll find is it's actually the widest truck bed in this segment so it's your typical bed length you know for these trucks you know, like a five foot bed but um, having the extra width there is really nice now to sacrifice I think the trade-off is that the bed seems a little bit more shallow than what you get with most other mid-size pickups so it just depends on what you're using the bed for if width is more important than depth, then you know this could really help you out a lot. And the really cool thing about the Ridgeline bed, there's a couple cool things, but one thing is that you have a huge built-in trunk inside of the bed there. So you open up that lid and you have a su super huge thing. I mean, it's bigger than like an even an average size uh, cooler or something. I mean, it has a drain plug at the bottom, so you actually could use it as a cooler but it's even bigger than most coolers. I mean, it's a huge space. You could fit suitcases in there. You can fit all kinds of stuff. And uh, that is one thing, you know, with most truck buyers, their big inconvenience is that you don't actually have a trunk. And unless you have a tonneau cover or some type of cap over the bed, you know, your stuff is all exposed to the elements. It can be stolen, whatever. And so having a lockable trunk there in the bed is a huge perk that I think really helps with the livability of the Ridgeline um, for those who do use their trucks every single day, you know, for normal errands and stuff like that. Throwing your groceries in there, much better than having them fly all over the back seat and stuff so really great that it has that and also in higher trims of the Ridgeline you can even get a built-in uh, truck bed audio system so it actually uses the walls of the bed and vibrates those to create the sounds to have the actual speaker experience you don't have any kind of exposed speakers or anything and it's really cool for tailgating and things like that to have an audio system in your truck bed there's really cool you also see various tie downs there's bed lighting, all that type of stuff as well, like you expect in trucks. It's also a composite bed, so it's gonna be a little more durable. You don't have to worry about bed liners and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, I think they did a really good job with the truck bed. It's just, you know, kind of thinking outside of the box. And uh, so if you're someone that appreciates those different you know, little twists and turns to the way things are set up, I think that, you know, you'll really like a lot, you know, that the Ridgeline has to offer here. But yeah, so that's it as far as all of our thoughts on the Ridgeline interior. Overall, I commend Honda for offering this. You know, they do something different. Instead of doing, you know, a normal body on frame pickup truck like everybody else, they do this unibody thing that's way more comfortable and, you know, drives a lot more like an SUV. Some people might hate that, you know, because you have less off-road capability and things like that. But um, I think that for most people that daily drive a truck, that just want a comfortable commute back and forth to work and then want to use a truck bed occasionally, this makes a whole lot more sense than the normal mid-sized pickup truck that beat you up with their rough rides and their, you know, very unrefined and smaller and more cramped cabins. I think the Ridgeline really makes a lot of sense. But you can go watch my driving review. I'll link it above if you want to hear, you know, more about how this vehicle drives and how the pricing is, the fuel economy, all those types of things cover in that video but yeah thank you guys very much for watching let us know your thoughts on the ridgeline interior in the comments below and we'll see you guys on the next one take, take care, care.